5 seconds. I must confess, I had expected something very different from what I see now. I had thought I would come and mix freely with old friends who call themselves journalists and who really have been my colleagues and friends for a long time. I thought it would be a friendly gathering, but I find it is altogether too formal and has become a repetition of the many functions where I have had to speak. I am afraid I cannot help saying that this meeting also suffers from this disadvantage. If Mr. Iyer had decided to put aside all old fashions, I would have been on the same floor with the rest of you, moved about, understood you, breathed the air of affection and gone back with pleasant memories. Now you have put me very serious questions which, however, I propose to answer although I have had little time to think about them. I am sorry to say that I cannot accept the compliment or the charge that you make that I am an incipient journalist and take every occasion to find satisfaction in that direction. I thought I was a very poor journalist because I spoke my mind whenever I wrote and did not try to know beforehand what people would like. I do not believe that a journalist can flourish if he proceeds in this manner. You ask me to help you to get the great owners of the papers, the press to deal with those who work under them more sympathetically. I do not believe that either the government or the governor general will succeed better in this than in dealing with other employers. I do not know if owners of the press will listen to government more than others have done. It is a question of conflict of economic interests to some extent but largely a question of patience and mutual understanding. I am surprised that you call journalism as industry before you came to that part of your address. I was thinking of telling you that the way out of all difficulties is to treat everything as an effort in making the world more beautiful. That is to say, I want you to look upon journalism as an art and not as an industry. If all of you working journalists will treat your vocation more as an art than as an industry, then all will be well. Journalists are like painters and poets rather than factory workers. They are really doing works of art. When you journalists write an article, when you write a leading article or even when you present an item of news, you are doing a work of art. Hitherto journalism was too much associated with politics. You thought that you were only an expanded legislative assembly and went on advising, opposing, consulting and debating. I think that is a wrong way to take journalism now. Now that we have no problem of foreign domination, we must reduce journalism or rather raise it to the level of an art. Does a poet ask the government to intervene between himself and the publishers? Can a painter ask the government to help him to get better prices for his pictures? Works of art cannot flourish in that manner. Although I have reputed your kind compliment, I think I know enough of the life of journalist to feel that I am giving good advice. Whatever may be your difficulties, whatever your internal pains and travels, do look upon what you produce as productive, creative art and then all will be well. Write good books, make good poems, make good pictures and also write good articles and make good newspapers. All will then be well. If you ask me to argue the point, I may not be able to do it either within the time given me or even if you give more time. But if you take my advice and practice it, I think you will find that all will be well. You are old friends. 
there is no reason for me to imagine that I am cleverer than any of you. All of you have dealt with the same subjects as I have. All of you have nearly as much experience as I have had according to the time you have given to it. As for wrangling and arguing policies, I think Indian newspapers must throw off the old hangover of imagining that they are just expanded legislative assemblies, launch out on everything in life and bring out things of beauty in order that life may be enriched in our country. Journalism is only one of the many ways in which life can be enriched and by continuing in the old style, we are not likely to be very useful. I am talking as one of you. You have rightly complained of the hangover of the government's attitude. I think it will not last very long, even if your accusation is correct. But let us all think first of our own faults. 2. Honesty Trading Corporation Meadows Street, Bombay 1 Dear Sirs, I thank you for your prompt reply with enclosures to my letter of the 9th instant regarding my appointment. I am satisfied with the prospects you hold out and I am anxious to demonstrate my ability to convince likely customers of the superiority of your productions over the many substitutes now existing. There are however several most important points in the agreement which require adjustment before it can be concluded. With respect to clause 1, I think it would avoid the danger of disputes if it stated exactly what are included. I am also anxious that it should be distinctly understood that I am not expected to be answerable for payments to travellers in connection with commission. I recommend that you forward each week a cheque covering the likely amount, which I shall disburse holding to your credit any sum remaining in hand. I respectfully suggest that the sum of thousand rupees be deposited with me for this purpose. I hope you will have no objection to giving the necessary sanction. Turning to the question of samples, I understand that these are to be free. Perhaps you will give instructions for a considerable stock of these to be sent by passenger train. As it is unnecessary for me to say that prospective buyers like to inspect the commodities before giving their orders. Respecting the determination of the agreement, will you kindly state distinctly merely as a formality and to avoid the possibility of future misunderstand or misconstruction? that it is a yearly one which, on condition that a turnover of at least 10,000 rupees is reached in any one year, is automatically renewable. Should the amount fall below the sum of 10,000 rupees, either side may give six months notice, but should I accomplish this as I confidently believe, I can the six months notice is to be given by me alone, you undertaking to renew the agreement for as long as I may require, hope our coming association will be instrumental in the advancement of the business, expecting a very early reply from you, yours faithfully.